Well, you know, the nice thing for me is when people, even though Keith had left three behind for a few years, when they'd ask him, so what about this three thing? And he'd say, we had a lot of fun. There's no ego clashes. There's no, we really had a lot of fun. And that meant a lot to me because he enjoyed it. He, he loved being on the tour bus. He loved playing on stage. We didn't tug at each other. We complimented each other. We worked as a team. And Carl, too. Amazing. And Carl's still doing it. He's playing better than ever. In this, the second part with Robert Berry, we talk about what it's like to work with the making of a video with a two-year-old boy to singing up front with Ambrosia, Keith Emerson, and Carl Palmer. He also took time to talk about his project, December People, a project, a band that performs in locations in need of a hand. The donations stay local and hopefully it brings focus to solutions in towns like my hometown, Aberdeen, Washington, that seems so out of touch and desperate to get it headed in the right direction. I think his sense of direction and empathy are more sustainable than just donations of money. Here's Robert Berry, producer, bass guitarist, mystery man on who knows what instrument, and vocalist of three, yes, the numeral three, and the last work of Keith Emerson, the song Somebody's Watching.
You know, we haven't talked about your vocals. You're a vocalist. Uh, you worked uh, in place of, I believe, David Pack for Ambrosia. Is that the well, I replaced him for a couple of years in Ambrosia. Dave left Ambrosia, and you know, I loved working in that band. They, they, that is an incredible band, and I had never sang that blue-eyed kind of soul stuff. I, I like the progressive part of Ambrosia, mm-hmm. but like biggest part of me, I never sang that stuff. Wow. Although I did a lot of that kind of music in the studio, you know, the more the, the soulful middle of the road mm-hmm. kind of thing, and. I loved playing with that man. But the hard lesson I learned was that David Pack was the guy that made that all happen. And when the leader of the band, the guy that's the singer and the guy that's the main writer leaves the band, it's hard to, as the new guy, mm-hmm. it's hard to get people to kind of, not, not follow my lead, but at least step up and say, hey, let's do it again. You know, let's put out a new album. Let's, you know, we all write, three of us had studios. And I couldn't... I just couldn't get it to happen, probably because I don't think they felt I was the right guy, maybe, um, to complete their band, even though it was a couple of years. They wanted more of a Little River Band, Perfect Harmony kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanted a little bit of it. I wanted that David Pack, a little more rock kind of part of it, along with the, the Blue Eyed Soul thing. I want to keep both ends of what they did going, you know? And uh, they wanted to be just kind of pure vocal um, perfection. And I, I have some more rough edges than that. So, but I, I regret that it didn't last forever for me because they oh, great guys and a great band. It just sort of wasn't meant to be for me. I love what you do vocally, too. Don't you find that it's hard to get a vocal group together that does those kind of harmonies? Well, the way Ambrosia was. Yeah. It was amazing. Those guys grew up together, though. I mean, they they had it, you know. Um I got to tell you, I've just assembled my 3.2 band to tour toward the end of the October. We're going to start, and we're going to play my whole 30-year history uh, in different albums and things I've been in, and we're going to do Life Beyond L.A. by Ambrosia because I had it on an album of my version of it. But everybody in 3.2, there's four of us, we all are singers, uh, Jimmy Keegan's from a band called Spock's Beard. This guy sings so high, he could be the lead singer of Yes. <laughs> he is so good while he's playing the drums. It's amazing. Wow. Uh, Andrew Collier is a keyboard player, and that was hard for me to, to really find the right guy um, to take on not only the Emerson stuff, but, I mean, GTR had a little Jeff Downs, uh, Ambrosia, you know. I mean, all the keyboard players involved in the kind of mu- music I was doing, they're all different and they're all extremely competent players. And uh, I had to find the right guy. Andrew's fantastic. He sings. And then Paul Keller, who went on tour, and has been in my band since I had Hush, my local band here, that actually broke out regionally and did pretty well. Um, Paul's been with me every inch of the way and played every song I've ever written, every place I've ever played. And he sings, too. So the four of us sing, and the harmonies, um, it's really something to have a vocal band. As you're saying, it's hard to find that kind of singing uh, band, you know, that has the, all the harmony, especially in the progressive rock field. It's not yeah. many that have uh, much going on. You have a video for Powerful Man. In, yeah. in it, is, is that your daughter? No, and it's funny, everybody thinks it's a little girl. That is actually a really good friend of mine's grandson. Oh, okay. When, when his mother brought him to the video shoot and I saw his hair I thought you know everybody's going to think this is Shirley Temple <laughs> <laughs> well you remember back in the day when we started growing our hair long right? when our parents are going you look like a woman yeah right well you know he's only two so I mean he's a young guy Jasper has a personality <laughs> and you can see how sweet it just his eyes you know you look in it and his eyes were, he looked at that big piano on the stage, and yeah. his eyes are all wide, and he's just sweet as guy. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it was nap time, oh. and when he got there, he wasn't going to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> he looked good on the video. <laughs> he was He was done. I said, look at these big boots of mine. I need you to put those on. 
I don't want to do that. Oh, he was no. too, so it wasn't saying it that clear, you know. Well, oh, come on. It'd be fun. They give you a dollar. So he had a dollar. He looked at me, even at two years old, he goes, Buck gets you nothing these days. Yeah. You know? Well, I have to apologize. This is a bad time in American history to mess up on gender. So, if. Oh, man. <laughs> don't ever apologize to me. I, I just went to see Louis C.K. do a comedy thing here because I had to see how he's going to get past uh, all the trouble he's been in for sexual harassment or whatever it is he's done. And he came out, the first thing out of his mouth was, well, you know, I've had some problems with bing, 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 bing. Yeah. Put it out there. He goes, hey, I'm a comedian. I don't have to tell you. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> and that was that. He totally went right past it. I thought, genius. I mean, he's a guy that kind of did like Pee Wee Herman, some weird stuff, you know. Okay. Um, but, yeah, but uh, <laughs> it was it's so the politically correct thing right now just drives me. Uh, yeah, and you know you you can be perfect your entire career in one little slip, and all of a sudden you're, you know, yeah, one of those for the rest of your Look life. Look at Roseanne Barr. I mean, I'm not a big fan of hers, but she's a comedian. She's got a big mouth. She's kind of disgusting a lot of times, and she has this hit show that everybody's loving, and she does one wrong thing. And she loses it all, plus everybody that worked with her lost it all. I'm going, really? What? Who does that? Who, who causes that? Yeah, comedy's, you know? comedy's dangerous, I think. Yeah, that way. Yeah. Back to your... Uh, that's why we're in the music business. <laughs> I, yeah, it's a little safer, but boy, that's a challenge, too. I think there's a lot of, a lot of vampires out there. Well, and of course, now with streaming and everything, a guy like me, I'm lucky I got in there and I did well enough to have a home, you know, paid cash for a house off my tour. Wow. Uh, have a great studio. People coming in all the time, recording, I'm making a living. I'm, I'm putting out my music worldwide and people are responding to it. But how does my son at 24 ever make a living when all he has is streaming? And where I used to get nine cents, he gets point oh oh one cent. And even a Beyonce will say, I sold... Six hundred million and made one hundred and sixty thousand dollars or something. Or before she would have made a couple million dollars. You know, it's so so bad for for music, and they've ruined it so much. Well, I tried to get Paul McCartney tickets, either that or the Stones. I thought, well, they're coming through town. You know, I want to see what these older guys how they're holding up. It was McCartney was four hundred and fifty dollars a ticket. Wow. And I thought, wait a minute, that's one of the richest men in the world. Hey, hold on, what's he doing that for? The mm -hmm. Stones, same thing. They can't make any money on record sales. You know? So so they do it with T-shirts oh. and ticket sales. Yeah, you know, it, it used to be it was T-shirts, but now, I mean, even a small show sometimes, a ticket is 120 bucks. I'm like, what? That's ridiculous. Yeah, it, I, I'm going to take my band out. We're going to take... We're going to put my 30 years of progressive rock and, and everything else I've done, because I've done a, a great tribute series at a label called Magna Carta, where I did a thing at Roundabout and Mr. the Gallery, Jeff Tall and uh, Carnival 9, the ELP, all these tribute oh, things. Man. We're going to put all this out. Well, I, I told the manager, I said, I want it to be a $40 ticket, and I want it to be small places. I, I think we can make it work. We play 300 seaters. I want to shake everybody's hand. I want to thank them for the support they gave me. And I want to make it affordable. So they go out and have some fun. If they want to have a drink or they don't, whatever. They're not spending 120 bucks on a ticket. That's ridiculous. Let alone 450. Well, we need to clone you, Robert. I think you've uh, mm -hmm. you've got the uh, the time warp thing going on. You're playing the music that I really love, and and to make it affordable, that's even better. But uh, yeah, and I, have to... I, I think even you know I have played big places, and and really the bigger it gets. Uh, the less you can't even tell who's out there yeah. you know it's just it's not personal and of course I mean McCartney's so big I, I don't blame him for playing huge places he has to there's too many people want to see him but I, I do blame him a bit for charging that kind of money yeah uh, that should be a VIP rich guy's ticket that gets to meet him and then kiss his wife or something you know what I mean? yeah, absolutely yeah well, <laughs> I pay 450 for that yeah well I, I think about somebody like you. you you've seen a lot of concerts from backstage where everything's catered and it's a party and that's, right. a, that's a lot of fun now to go and stand at a crowd in the first place but spend that kind of money and well even a movie now is 13 bucks or something right to 
yeah. to see a movie. It, which that's not too much money, really. But and a drink here in California is twelve bucks to get a regular old, you know, Tangeray tonic, gin and tonic, is twelve bucks. Oh, really? You know, there's a. And, and you, how many in the, the shots in the bottle? Probably. Uh, I don't, I, this isn't anything I'm really into, but it's 20 shots in a bottle. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll $12, go with that. $12, right? So <laughs> th their profit margin is huge. Yeah, and now you got to tip and, somebody uh, and, and probably had to pay for parking. And yeah, I went out for a cocktail and it was 500 bucks. <laughs> right, right. And I'm not really complaining about it as much as I, I think that it's sort of like, uh, you know, I feel like I'm on a soapbox here, but yeah, we'll go for December it. people, my holiday band, yeah. we do things for charity. And our, our motto is that we want to go into a city or town and we want to play for that city or town and we want to raise money for the homeless there and the hungry. We don't want it to go all over the world. We don't want it to go all over the U.S. We want it to be for that town. We want, I think that, it, or we think that if every city or town got together and helped their own homeless people that we could get rid of homeless people in all the u.s because it's not that hard to do when you find out what twenty dollars will buy food wise and when you find out the amount of buildings that are empty that could turn into housing and different things and of course you know some of these people are mentally ill you got to take care of them but the, our states are that we're doing so much with or so little with our money that our taxes collected and everything, there's got to be a way to solve this problem. So our thing is we go into that town and we want to help those people only in that town. We're, you know, we're not going to be sending things to Colorado from uh, Seattle, Washington. We want Seattle homeless problem, which I'm not even sure how bad yours is. Oh, Every it's city has it. It's epic. It's biblical. It's huge. Well, the problem with you guys is that all those guys look like Kurt Cobain. So you can't tell. Yeah. All right. They got the, the long hair and the Pendletons. And <laughs> you think, hey, that, that's a rock musician there. No, that's a homeless guy. <laughs> Kurt came from my hometown, Aberdeen, actually. And if you want to see a, wow. a, a ghetto now, it's uh, if you were to drive through, like you're going to the beach or something, and you only saw the houses that are on the way through yeah. town, you'd yeah. think that the whole town is that way. And really, it's not. But it has a huge heroin problem and a huge homeless problem. Oh, and the, oh. the city bought up some land just for the homeless people. They call it Hobo Beach. It's on the Chehalis River. Yeah. And it's it's horrible. And it just seems to be getting worse and worse. And uh, and I it's tell people... It's more like a concentration camp huh? with all the people camped out. Or? Yeah, and it has its political problems because they aren't happy. And the city's, if you could call it a city, isn't happy with it. And... And there doesn't seem to be a solution, and it just goes on, and it gets progressively worse. And uh, yeah, when I tell you know, there's not a solution, but you know, there's churches everywhere, and they all have a minister or a priest, or they have something. They bring people together. They take care of their a lot of them. Take care of people in their parish or whatever. They're the needy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes one person that cares enough, and it should be the governor or the the mayor and stuff should really step up and say, look, I care about this. Let, let's fix this, because it's not that expensive to do. But they don't do it. Yeah. I think uh, there's a human nature element that confuses everything, and part of it's greed, misappropriation of money, uh, nobody's accountable, yep. uh, and it goes on and on. There's my soapbox. So. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. And, you know, I, uh, I don't know why, I don't know, it just seems like the weakest of our citizens need to be taken care of. I'm, I'm not for universal health care for everybody. You know, those that are working and that can take care of themselves, you better damn well take care of yourself. But there are people that can't or that just fell on hard times that need need some help. And when you get people help, like we have a thing here called Downtown Streets Team. They help the homeless by getting them a job. They don't care if it's putting up flyers for some event or you know, a lost child or whatever it is, they get these people a job and they call it dignity through work. And mm. they get these people relaunched. That's fantastic. That, that's exactly what a lot of people need, just a chance to prove themselves. And then um, just hard to find enough leaders, I guess, to do that. And of course, you don't see me doing it either. So I guess I shouldn't be talking too much about it. Well, but you we, are. Did, we raised $25,000 in a little city here called Campbell um, for the homeless. 
with December people, gave them a check for twenty five grand, and uh, you know everybody at that concert, eight hundred people. I got on that stage. I said, you know, that your ticket dollar is going right to the homeless people in this city. You know, this isn't going to anywhere else. When you paid that price, you did some good, and and it makes people feel good at least to be part of it, even if they can't lead it. You know. And it's December people is the name of it. I love that. Yeah, that, it's a crazy band. It's something I thought up, you know, back twenty years ago. Actually, two thousand one. I must have done that quite twenty. <laughs> but, um, I did an album for that company, Magna Carta. I did tribute stories for, and I based all the classic Christmas things, like like Night Before Christmas. I made that into Stairway to Heaven. Oh, cool! And then I put you know, even like the prog stuff, Carol the Bells was done as yes with uh it had different different quotes from the relayer album and tales of topographic oceans from roundabout all these different things so it sounds like a go on a yes album and we have like journeys uh what's this on can't stop believing there's angel we've heard on high it, it, go on youtube and you'll get a kick you're a musician you, you'll find you'll get the joke i like to say i'll check it out yeah so every yeah every holiday song you could never have seen to some people ever before and when when we do uh, Silent Night, you can sing it because we're doing it exactly the way the song is, the melody and the words, but we're doing it like Tears for Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Oh, cool. And the arrangement and everything <laughs> is all in there, all the little hooks, all little pieces, and it, you'll, you'll, you'll laugh. <laughs> you'll find something in there, and you go, wow, that's, that's, it is funny. Are these but, arrangements... So we bring them. Did, did you uh, come up with the arrangements, or...? Yeah, I'm the guy that morphs all this together. It's, just an, <laughs> it's part of what I told you about those songwriters that come in. So who do you want to knock off the charts? I love that. Ozzy Osbourne. Okay, yeah. let's see. How do we get you in that you know that market kind of? And it's just part of something I sort of spent my life doing for people. That's a cool approach. And uh, I don't want to take your entire day up because I know I could, but <laughs> <laughs> if you let me. But... Um, one of the best compliments I ever hear, um, I think, is fun to be around. When somebody says you're fun to be around, I think that's a cool thing. Now, judging by the people you work with, you wouldn't be working with this caliber of, of people, this caliber of people, if I can say that correctly, uh, if you <laughs> if you weren't. I mean, it's clear. I mean, you're, you're totally personable. You're totally humble. And gosh, you wanted to talk about December people more than anything. That's crazy. Well... You know, the nice thing for me is when people, even though Keith had left three behind for a few years, when they'd ask him, so what about this three thing? And he'd say, we had a lot of fun. There's no ego clashes. There's no, we really had a lot of fun. And that meant a lot to me because he enjoyed it. He, he loved being on the tour bus. He loved playing on stage. We didn't tug at each other. We complimented each other. We worked as a team. And Carl, too. Amazing. I mean, Carl's still doing it. He's playing better than ever. Wow, but, you know, I, I'm a guy that always has ideas and enjoy what I do so much that you, you know, if I believe what I'm saying or not. So you say, well, I got this song in E minor. I say, well, if I want to mess it, let's put a G in there. What? You know, that will be a G. Why don't I put a G chord? What, 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 no, it won't work. Okay, it won't work. But, but I know how to stir things up. I knew how to give ideas. I have, you know, if we need pieces, I got ideas. If you don't quite have it completed. I know how to inspire you to get you going. And I think the guys I've worked with, they sort of see me as the utility knife, right? The, I could do a little bit of everything. And I play a lot of instruments. And it's just sort of made it easier to get somewhere, to get that end product. And I've been involved with a lot of bands that sort of can't get from A to B. Um, if it's writer's block, or it's personality conflicts, or whatever. And even with GTR, where the, the, the singer just really was not happy I was in the band, I was the only American, I was the new guy, and I was writing all the songs of Steve Howe. He wasn't happy with it, but we got that album, we got all those songs, we wrote them, we got it demoed, and we got the record contract, and the dance and everything, and then I decided to leave because I didn't want to be bullied the rest of my, my career, you know, it just didn't seem like the right place for me. Yeah. But I could still make it happen, because I love it. And you, you're the one that brought up passion, right? At the beginning of our conversation. I did. That's what it's about. Yeah. So cool. 
I, like I said, I could talk to you all day long, but uh, we're, we're 48 minutes into this. That's plenty. Of st- I have a session in 15 minutes, too, so I'm going to have to run. Okay. Well, I certainly appreciate talking to you, and hopefully, uh, you know, we can get together and chat in the future, and we'll see what's going on with you. I uh, expect, maybe not this year, because the tour is going to be kind of routed specifically to sort of jumpstart the whole thing, but I expect to get to Seattle next year. Who knows? It might be this year, but if I do, John Lappin, my PR guy and the guy you know, will yeah. get a hold of you, and we, I need to meet you in person and uh, say hi. You never know. I December people isn't going right now because I don't have a manager for it, but it, it just gets huge response and does huge good wherever it goes. And it might ramp up again if I could find the right guy. If we uh, find the right guy, put on the map, maybe we can come and help with some of those problems you got down the street there. It'd be nice to do. Much appreciated. Okay, Bruce. Well, I, I've enjoyed talking to you. Okay. You Knowing the double keyboard Vox Continental got me going. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I'm tired now. <laughs> okay. All righty. Well, you take care and uh, enjoy your session. Thanks, Bruce. I'll talk to you again. All righty. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. radio show with Bruce Hilliard. We'll be back with a new horizon, but until then, honor the future. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. And we're all just trying to make the next day a bit better. <laughs>